All right, so I just wanted to take a minute just to introduce Spirant for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with us. So we're a, a company that builds uh, testing and assurance solutions. Um, and really, our, our goal is to enable our customers to deliver on the promises that they're making, whether it be a specification in a data sheet uh, or an SLA for a next generation service that you're offering out to your customer. Um, so that's really our goal at Spirant. And I wanted to talk to you about some use cases um, today that, that we're seeing and we're helping our customers deploy uh, out in, in real networks today. So before I get into that, I just wanted to talk about, you know, kind of some of the key problems that we're seeing. So our customers, you know, really need to be able to deliver high quality differentiated services. So it's next generation services um, and deliver them faster to market at, at lower cost. And I think this is something that's kind of weighing on everybody in the industry. You know, we're not getting hundreds of more engineers um, in the room. Uh, we've got kind of the same resources that we had before, but now we're having to take a network that still supports 2G, 3G, LTE, and now add services like 5G on top of that, uh, and do it ideally faster so we can keep up with our customers uh, and keep up with our competitors, some of whom are being uh, you know, expanded to include companies like uh, Facebook and Google uh, and these types of cloud service providers as well. And lastly, you know, we've just had Robin here from the broadband forum. You know, we want to do this in a standardized and open format. So I don't know about you guys, I'm guessing, you know, given the fact that we're all here in the room on, uh, on Thursday here talking about NFV and SDN, we're all technologists, we all love technology. So it's one of the things I love. Uh, and I just wanted to draw an analogy from a another industry that's doing a lot of automation. Uh, and that analogy comes from self-driving cars. So if we look at kind of a, a next generation, this is a, a fifth level self-driving uh, car, uh, level five. Uh, you know, the key things that are involved in allowing this car to know where it is and understand where it's going. And I'm going to tie this back to networking shortly. Um, so this is the whole array of, of sensors um, that this car has. Uh, and they all feed into the ECU, which stands for engine control unit, but it's doing a lot more. It's basically the brains of the system uh, of this autonomous car. So let's talk about these sensors. So we've got an image sensor. This is like a camera, a 2D camera. Um, and it observes the environment, understands what's going on in the environment. Then we have the radar. A lot of cars have this today. It's used for um, things like positioning the car um, and ranging. Uh, and lastly is the most interesting one, um, is the LIDAR. And so this is actually a, a laser that's shining out into the environment and measuring how, uh, how far different things are. One of the very interesting things about the, uh, the LIDAR versus the image sensor is because it's actively sending that laser out into the field, uh, it can penetrate things like snow and, and rain and leaves. And lastly, we have the ECU. So this is the thing that knows where we want to go, uh, detects obstacles, and most importantly, it's going to react to changes in the environment. So how does this tie into what our customers are out there doing in networks today? Um, and so we're going to kind of walk through what customers have been doing in the past, uh, and then also look at you know, what we're seeing our most advanced customers doing in terms of leveraging these tools for uh, automation. So if we look at what customers have always done in the past, they've relied on telemetry, the SNMP traps that are being sent um, by the network devices themselves, and monitoring solutions that capture and detect what's happening out in the network. Some more advanced customers may have that, that radar function the, the long range view where they actually do end to end active testing. They're actively injecting customer type traffic into the network and measuring things like what is the voice quality? How long did it take me to establish a connection? Um, but then this is kind of the, the next generation area where we're looking at that 3D view. It's that instant feedback of what's happening out there in the network. Uh, and what we're seeing is our customers are instrumenting their networks kind of on a per VNF basis so they can understand what's happening out there in the field in real time. So when they're making a change, when the obstacle happens in the network, they can actually react to that. And lastly, we have the ECU, which in our case is, is orchestration and analytics, being able to understand that, that complete picture of what's out there in the network um, and deal with obstacles. Obstacles are going to happen, whether it's you're a self-driving car or you're a network engineer. Um, things are going to happen in your network that you're going to have to react to in real time. 
So let's go through a, a couple examples um, which are based on this uh, Etsy architecture that we've been uh, contributing to at Spirant um, and combining different aspects to feed into the Mano. So being able to feed all of this data from these test VNFs that live out in a service chain. So we've got our virtual test agents that live out in a service chain and feeding the data from those agents uh, back into a analytics engine, which then talks to the Mano. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example uh, of a couple of these things. But really, this is a proactive approach that allows our customers to automate their network and really have a view of what's happening out in the network. So this is a, an interesting example. This is a, a real example of ours um, where one of our carrier customers has a, an IoT network. And one of their customers is Alarm.com. And if you're not familiar with Alarm.com, they build home alarm systems. So these are intrusion detection, fire, um, and, and those types of monitoring systems. And they use the LTE network to transmit back to their uh, data center. And so one of the things with, with this type of network, with emergency type services, is you know, typically they're quite quiet. They don't send a lot of traffic. Um, you know, so there's not a lot going on. So if you were trying to use a traditional passive style monitoring system to understand is this network working and you detect a problem, it means somebody's house is on fire and they're not able to get that through to the end service. So what our customer is doing is actively emulating those events um, and testing all the way through to the application service provider. So here's an example. So this is like that long range radar uh, in the analogy that we have going. So we've got our, our device here. We're sending uh, a packet all the way through the network. And we're measuring things like loss, response time, uh, and the time it takes to even attach to the LTE network. Um, so this is a, a good day. Everything's going well. Um, but then the network traffic starts increasing. Um, there's a lot going on. And this is actually. It, you know, if you understand IoT, this is a new function uh, for some of these devices in the network. So we've got a lot of congestion in the network. There's a lot of mobility going on. Uh, and we've seen a degradation in what's happening in the network. And this is really key. What we're trying to do is detect <laughs> degradation, small things that, that humans won't even be able to observe yet um, in the network so that we can find trends that we can react to. So we found a trend. The response time, it's getting higher. It's taking longer uh, for this end server to respond to the end device. So that's our radar view. Now we want to go to the LIDAR view. We want to understand you know, what is causing this uh, within our service chain. So we've been feeding that back to the results engine. And now the test controller gets involved here. And it deploys another virtual test agent. This is just a VM that's running in the network. Uh, and it was actually deployed by the Mano. Um, so we're testing now from another point deeper in the network. And we see basically the same result. Um, so we know the issue isn't on the RF portion of the network now. We run another instance here. Um, and we see from this point into the network, the problem's not there anymore. So we've identified the fault in the network. It was this device, the MME, in the network that caused the problem. And really, the issue is congestion in this use case. So what are they going to do? Um, they're going to move over to the uh, VNF manager. And it's going to dynamically scale that MME. Uh, and then we go back to running the test in a, a stateful way um, to understand you know, everything is good again and waiting for the next instance. So really being able to drill down into a service chain and understand where a problem is existing in the network is one of the, the key things that we're seeing our, our leading customers um, focus on. Just moving into the, uh, the next example, um, you know, a lot of our customers are looking at services like SD-WAN. Um, these are very, can be quite complicated services because a lot of times you've got newer um, edge locations. A lot of times these are enterprise locations. But they have an existing network, so they have to um, connect between the, the two networks. So that's what this function here is doing, the SDN gateway. Um, 
And the other thing that's happening with an SDN is we have multiple layers of network, right? We have the physical layer connectivity, the underlay network, um, and then we've got the overlay SDN network, and then we've got services running on top of that, um, which creates you know, quite a complicated uh, scenario. And then also, as we heard earlier um, in the sessions today, that you know, really where the scale is is out at the edge. It's the you know, thousands of um, bank locations where these end devices are located. Uh, and really, the key is to be able to offer a service like this is to make it simple for the enterprise customer, make it very easy to install uh, and turn up. And a lot of our customers, uh, and I don't know what your experience is, but they also have, you know, it's not just an SLA on the service, it's an SLA on how fast and how accurately they can turn up these services. Uh, so they'll be having a contract with a large bank, um, which will say, you know, hey, within 100 days, we need, you know, 200 sites turned up with this service. Um, so they have to offer that uh, as an SLA. And to be able to do that means they need to rely on things like automation to be able to de deploy these services. Um, so here's another example um, that we're working on for SD-WAN and actually deploying these services uh, out into a network um, using standard interfaces um, like the, the Kafka bus for reporting results back, uh, actively streaming those into the network. So just quickly walking through the, the scenario here, we've got a, an orchestrator, um, which typically what happens is the white box gets plugged in at the edge of the network, uh, and it will call in uh, to the network. It will let it, the network know it's there. Um, and then the orchestration system will then populate that, that device. It will install the VMs that it needs to run, uh, including uh, VMs from Spirant or virtual test agents. Um, to be able to move on to the next step of the process. So the controller has now made connection with this white box that's uh, sitting out at the customer edge. Um, it's initiated the configuration on that device and it's deployed a virtual test agent. Um, and now it's gonna start um, running a series of tests uh, and reporting that back into the system. So what we are effectively creating here is a birth certificate um, for this service. So you know on day one, um, the service is delivering on the SLA that uh, you have with your end customer and uh, everything is up and running as expected. All right, so I, I wanted to kind of finish and, and kind of tie this back um, to the, um, the self-driving car uh, example, and I kind of skipped ahead there. So, you know, one of the things that, that I think about as a technologist is what happens when the self-driving car um, loses its way and, and no longer remembers where it is. And, you know, I've been hearing about the 5G application for self-driving car and, you know, the need for ultra low latency, ultra high reliability. Um, and really, it comes down to this guy. Um, so this is what happens when your self-driving car loses its way, right? It can't figure out what to do. It's gonna pull over to the side of the road and this guy from a data center somewhere is gonna take over driving your car. Um, and, and this is happening in experimental uh, stages today, but if you think about the use case and the use cases we've just gone through, you know, we wanna make sure if somebody's remotely driving your car over a 5G network, that that network is well instrumented and that you, know, you have that low latency um, and ultra reliability so that this guy can actually pilot your car uh, to a safe place where the car can you know, know where it is and, and take over driving again. Um, and so this is something I, I learned about recently, this teleoperation, and I thought that was pretty interesting and uh, an interesting way to tie it back into uh, the talk here. So I just wanted to close with talking about a little bit about what's happening within our customers and how their organizations are changing. So we're seeing our customers moving from being kind of uh, horizontally integrated where they've got you know, an R&D group that designs uh, what's gonna happen in the network, they design the services, and then they hand it off to a test group uh, who hands it off into a, a, an operations team which deploys the service or a deployment team, uh, and then it moves to an operations team and a maintenance team. And really what we're seeing is those teams are now integrating horizontally to offer an end-to-end -end service. Uh, and really, what the, the, the fundamental change is a move from kind of a waterfall, you know, hey, we're going to deploy a service every nine months, 
to this DevOps model, which you know, a lot of us, if you're in the vendor community, we've been using these models for quite a long time, but we're seeing our customers now implementing these models and really integrating their teams you know, all the way from the lab to production. Uh, and so we're really seeing a, a demand for automation uh, in deploying these services. It's more accurate um, than what service providers have been doing in the past. You know, a lot of the service providers that I've talked to have said, you know, they do a lot of manual processes, especially when it comes to deploying or upgrading uh, a device in the network. And I was amazed in talking to customers at you know, the largest tier one operators. You know, hey, when you're deploying a core node um, in the network, how do you test it? And a lot of times they've got engineers out in the field with handsets doing manual tests. Um, and it just amazed me that you know, there's a core node that has a million subscribers on it and they've got six guys out at 3 a.m. in the morning uh, running a manual test on that. Um, and really when we have shown them you know, the capability of where we are today with the ability to put test VNFs and really metric the network, um, you know, it really comes to uh, light and hits home with them you know, this concept of being able to actively test their network um, and provide all of that information, as well as all of the telemetry, all of the different information throughout the network um, into a centralized database that can then feed that back into the management system. And really, you know, it comes back to Fern's principles, which we all learned in, in engineering school, of you know, starting with the lowest layer, making sure that the NFVI uh, and the systems, the infrastructure that we're running these services on is capable and ready, um, and then moving up the stack all the way to the service level um, to measuring something like what is the voice quality, what is the video quality that's happening on this network. Uh, and that's really what we're focused on at, at Spiron, is helping our customers uh, simplify and accelerate the rollout of next generation services. So with that, I'll uh, hand it back to Paul. I don't know if there's a few minutes, if there's any questions. All right, if not, uh, I invite you guys to come down to uh, B1, which is where our, our booth is, and myself and our colleagues will be interested in, uh, in talking to you. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thanks a lot, Paul.